What are the types of team compositions in League of Legends? What defines them, and what are some key characteristics from each type? Do competitive teams draft towards one of these types, or do they draft in a different manner altogether? Hi, my name is Zernos, and in today's video, we will go over the draft theory of what makes a particular type of team composition. There are six types of team compositions in competitive drafting. Charge, Capture, Split Push, Poke, Protect, and Dance. The first team composition we will discuss is a Charge Comp. Charge Comps are the most common team composition type in competitive League of Legends. Charge Comps want to group up and conduct short team fights to deal as much damage as they can in a short period of time. Characteristic traits of charge comms are area of effect crowd control, area of effect damage, short range, and very good engage. Charge comps usually have three melee champions that will act as a front line for the remaining two mid and bot laners, which will be the primary damage dealers, but the top laner can also fill that role. The strength of a charge comp lies in their ability to force team fights around objectives. This is attributed to their good engage and front-to-back fighting formation, with the tanks in the front and the damage dealers in the back. Charge comps will want to stick together more often than not, because their champions are not strong in isolation, so they are strong against other comps that want to stick together as well. There are several weaknesses to a charge comp. A charge comp must usually stick together to be effective at what they do best, which is teamfighting around objectives. If the enemy decides to either not teamfight, or rather split up the map to exert pressure on other places, then charge comps can succumb to their own indecisiveness to answer the split. The solo laners of charge comps are usually not ideal in 1 vs 1 situations, and a strong duelist would indeed make this composition have a hard time. Charge comps are also not good in extended drawn out teamfights since they are so reliant on their ultimates, which could be on cooldown if already used during the course of the teamfight. The second team composition we will discuss is a capture comp. Capture comps want to pick people off one by one to outnumber the enemy when sieging or during teamfights, and ultimately get advantages in the map. Characteristic traits of capture comps are single target crowd control, single target burst, and high mobility. Champions picked for capture comps are also often squishy. Capture comps will have a mixture of short and long range depending on what creates the best chances to catch and kill the opponent. The fighting formation for capture comps will be the primary engager who sets up the kill onto the target in the front, with the rest of the team in the back to follow up on the pick. The strength of this comp lies in their ability to burst targets quickly to stop the enemy team from contesting objectives, usually during the earlier stages of the game. This also means that capture comps love working with vision denial, since they want to catch people off guard from the darkness of fog of war. Which also means that this team comp is also very good at punishing simple mistakes like face checks, pushing too far up in lane, and fighting around the jungle. The weaknesses of a capture comp is of course their team fighting potential, which means if they don't get enough advantages in the early game to snowball and stomp the opponent, they are destined to fail in the later stages of the game when team fights matter a lot more. This comp also cannot resort to splitting up the map because they may not be necessarily strong in the side lanes like a split push comp. So if a team is willing to take the risk of falling off in the late game in return for an early game that can snowball out of control, then capture comps are an ideal choice. The third team composition we will discuss is a split push comp. Split push comps are straightforward in what they want to do. You have one or two champions, usually the solo laners, go to the side lanes and constantly pressure the enemy turrets. Characteristic traits of split push comps would be strong dueling champions who must take teleport as their summoner spell, a self-sufficient bot lane that will not die and can safely wave clear in the mid lane, and good disengage to stop the enemy from collapsing on anyone. If a team fight breaks out, 
The fighting formation of a split push comp will be the two solo laners flanking from behind and the rest of the team fighting the enemy from the front. The strength and weakness of a split push comp lies in the players that execute it. Since this strategy requires strong solo laners that will never lose in a 1 vs 1 situation, the individual performance of those players is key. A strong solo laner will attract the attention of the enemy, which would give a man advantage to his team on other sides of the map. A weak solo laner will go even against their counterparts, not forcing the enemy to answer to the split, which would be a big problem when teamfights occur, since split push comps are weak at 5 vs 5 scenarios. The fourth team composition we will discuss is a poke comp. A poke comp will have two or three champions that have long range skills which do massive amounts of damage to squishy champions. Poke comps love to just sit back and whittle down the enemy slowly. Characteristic traits of poke comps would be champions with very long range in both auto attacks and skills and plenty of disengage. Poke comps tend to be squishier than charge or protect comps but they may also have one tank in their team to provide much needed heal and utility. The champions that are in charge of poking usually lack mobility, so having good disengage is key to protecting them. The strength of a poke comp is their ability to dissuade the enemy from forcing fights by getting them low enough so they recall back to the base. This would give a numbers advantage for the poke comp team that can freely take the objectives without much competition. The weakness of a poke comp is apparent when they get engaged on and have to actually teamfight. In a pure 5 vs 5 scenario, poke comps would generally lose unless the enemy starts off with low health. Poke comps also suffer against tanky champions who can survive the pressure from this comp. Poke comps are also not good against champions that have high mobility since it will make it difficult to land poke on a fast target than a slow one. The fifth team composition we will discuss is a protect comp. A protect comp is similar to a charge comp where they want to group up to have team fights, but unlike charge comps, protect comps rely on one champion to do the majority of the damage, so the rest of the team must protect their precious damage dealer. Characteristic traits of a protect comp are two or more tanks for utility and crowd control, a hyperscaling ADC, an enchanter to buff the ADC, and a secondary carry to output damage. Protect comps tend to have slow early games due to the nature of their scaling champions. But once they get items and levels, protect comps are one of the scariest to deal with. The strength of a protect comp comes from how strong they are in team fights. In most cases, protect comps will have all of their members surround the main carry of the team to enable them to do as much damage over time as possible. They can also just form a front to back fighting formation with the tanks in the front and the carries in the back. The weakness of a protect comp comes from their dependency on the late game. Protect comps are usually very weak in the early game, so other team comps can definitely abuse this window to take as many advantages as possible. The sixth team composition we will discuss is a dance comp. Dance comps are all about kiting the enemy to the point where they burn all of their cooldowns and mana and become easy pickings for the dance comp. Although very reliant on execution like a split push comp, a dance comp is one of the most annoying comps to deal with. Characteristic traits of a dance comp are champions that have high mobility paired with stealth, invulnerability, and other abilities that will help them kite their enemies. Just like a split push comp, the strength and weakness of a dance comp lies in the players that execute it. Mechanical skill is extremely important to make a dance comp work since dance type champions are very high risk, high reward. Dance comps can be good in all stages of the game, and can also be good in team fights or playing in the side lanes, but this is dependent on the mechanical skill of the players. So what is the drafting trend in the professional scene? Most of the time, team compositions will be a mixture of all of the six that I have discussed. The reason why they tend to be that way is because teams have more options and flexibility in-game when drafting complex team comps rather than drafting a single type of team comp. Drafting one type of team comp will give you synergy and very clear win conditions that must be played through, but it also exposes the draft to clear weaknesses. So in order to minimize those weaknesses as much as possible, 
While retaining the strengths of some of the team comp types mentioned, most teams will go for complex drafts. For example, in the game between Cloud9 vs Evil Geniuses, Cloud9 has a comp that can have Charge, Capture, and Poke modes. This allows them to have the powers of each type of team comp but not at their full potential. If Cloud9 wanted to draft for a full Charge comp, then they would have picked Lissandra or Galio and exchanged Tom Kench for Nautilus or Thresh. If they wanted to draft a full poke comp, they would have picked Jace in the top lane and Varus instead of Ezreal. If they wanted to draft a capture comp, they would have picked Rek'Sai in the jungle, Nautilus support, and perhaps Renekton top. Having only one type of team comp makes it easy to spot weaknesses in gameplay, but also provides a defined strategy that when played towards can lead to victory. On many occasions, competitive teams do not understand how to draft optimally. So they will pick a bunch of champions that went together, either lack the necessary synergy or do not form reliable win conditions. A clear example of this would be in the game between Golden Guardians vs FlyQuest. FlyQuest have gone for a capture plus dance type of team composition that is very mismatched in terms of where their win conditions lie. Callista and Cassidy are the main carries of the team, but have such different timings in their power spikes. Cassidy wants to scale to 3 core items, while Callista and Blitz want to snowball as early as 1 core item. Pantheon and Blitz are there to get early leads with their catch potential, but Cassidy cannot enable them to do so. A lot of the pressure in this draft is on the Blitzcrank to set up engages and picks with his hook. Against Zoe and Lee Sin, you can expect FlyQuest to have a much weaker mid and jungle 2v2, which would also mean a weaker 4v4 in the early game disregarding the top laners. So unless Pantheon and Blitzcrank play exceptionally well, catching Golden Guardians will not be easy. Pantheon can try to snowball top lane, since that is the only lane that has priority in the early game. But since Maokai plays relatively safe to other top laners, Pantheon cannot gank Maokai unless Aatrox somehow manages to get the Maokai low in the first place, which would also require Aatrox to play much better than the Maokai. If the game goes even for the majority of the time, FlyQuest will have a Kassadin that should be unstoppable after his 3 core items, but the rest of the team will fall off in terms of their usefulness. Now the pressure shifts towards the Kassadin, who will need to find a way to get close enough to Golden Guardians' comp, who have more crowd control, utility, and poke than FlyQuest does. Aatrox, Pantheon, and Kassadin are all short-range champions that need to find a way to creatively access the backline of Zoe and Varus. So all in all, FlyQuest comes to the problem of having a draft that is very reliant on execution rather than synergy and cohesion. On the other hand, Golden Guardians went for a poke capture style team comp that is also very confusing because of the Maokai pick. The rest of the team looks fine, but Maokai is a big question mark. He is bad here because he enables the short range champions FlyQuest have by being a tank that wants to be in the front line engaging with his skills. Aatrox especially would love to have a Maokai come towards him so he can chop him down with his great sword. Maokai doesn't have good disengage tools other than his ultimate so a better option for Golden Guardians would be Poppy who would provide the necessary tankiness while having very good disengage, ultimately allowing the carries to continuously poke with their long range. The rest of the draft in my opinion is okay for what they want to play towards. Lee Sin is good here because he has a strong early game jungler who will put a lot of the pressure on the weak early game of Cassidy and match the catch potential from Pantheon. Pressuring the Cassidy is key in drafting the Zoe and Lee Sin, but this is not as difficult a task as what Blitzcrank and Pantheon must do to get ahead in the early game. Pantheon and Callista will eventually fall off against Golden Guardians' superior draft that honestly does not have to do much outside keeping the Cassidy at bay. But in conclusion, I think both teams could have made some drastic improvements to their drafts by picking champions that would actually help them form clearer win conditions which would help the players understand how to execute their champions in the game. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I will be here with another video next Friday, so see you soon.